Disclaimer before the video starts. What I mean by top SBAA in this video is the ones that have the highest battle rating possible, and not the best SBAA that a nation has. So no, I'm not about to compare 11.7 SAMs with stuff like the Type 93, Machbet, and Auto Main Anti-Aircraft Tank for Intercept and Com So CAS at top tier is ridiculously powerful. On one hand, you have mock speed jets that are mostly impossible to shoot down with gun-based platforms. And on the other, you have helicopters that can pop up and read your license plate from 20 kilometers away. If you try and do something about it, they will faint from the overwhelming force of direct eye contact. Luckily, players have ground-based options to deal with these aerial threats. Just like aircraft evolved to carry more sophisticated systems and weaponry, so too do SBAAs. Aircraft past a certain point are too quick and have too much weapon range to be engaged by conventional gun-armed anti-air platforms. As part of the surface-to-air arms race, missile-equipped anti-air vehicles appear as early as 9.0 in order to better dispatch of planes and helicopters with enhanced capabilities. Tech trees begin to phase these early SAMs out fairly quickly. Starting at battle rating 10.0 and onward, air defense consists entirely of semi-automatic or beam-riding missiles that are guided by mouse. These are some of the most effective vehicles in the game for defending the ground from enemy aircraft. The missiles carried by high-tier SBAAs don't require a lock in order to fire. The range of the missiles are also increased, starting from 7 kilometers from the early ones and reaching all the way out to 18 kilometers on the latest. The only missile that can reach that far is the 95YA6, which is reserved for the Pantsir S1. The Pantsir S1 shares its spot with three other vehicles as the only 11.7 SAMs in the game. The Pantsir, ADATS, ITO, and Tor M1 are all 11.7 anti-airs. Okay, fine. Yes, the Flaric Rad is 11.72. But there are several reasons why it really shouldn't be. First of all, what do you notice about every other 11.7 SPAA turret? Well, the keen-eyed among you will notice that none of them still use the Roland turret. You know, the weapon system found on SBAs and entire BR range below them? None of them use it, except for the Flaric Rod. And that is one of its main weaknesses. Every single other 11.7 can fire 8 or more missiles at a time without having to reload. Granted the automatic reload system of the Roland is fairly quick, it does require the turret to turn completely parallel to the hull in order to begin the process. And god help you if you miss your second missile, because if you don't have any terrain to crash it into, you have to wait until the missile finishes its flight time and explodes on its own. So, I would argue that the autoloader is pretty much a net negative here. As for the platform that the Flaric Rod is based on, the Mancat A1 truck isn't exactly superb either. Mobility, as to expect from the biggest ground vehicle in the game, is not the greatest. Top speed is actually rather impressive, but you're never going to be reaching it in a real battle. It's not very survivable either. Despite internal modules being very spaced out given its size, it's not like it really matters in the event that an enemy sees you. Because even if their main gunshot doesn't kill you, the Flaric Rod is protected only by armor plates 5mm thick. This means that there's virtually no gun in the game that can't pen it. Not even the Puma's MG4. All in all, if you want to live in the Flaric Rod, it's best not to be seen. But uh, good luck with that. Now it's time to talk about the VT-1s. Before the update Sky Guardians, the VT-1s could easily be considered to be the best surface-to-air missile in the game. Now, you would be better off using almost anything else. Since Sky Guardians, the VT-1 has been nerfed in two major ways. First of all, it now has a guidance delay for the first two seconds it's launched. It flies completely straight and is essentially dumb until the first second has passed. It might not seem like a big deal, but keep in mind that the Flaric Rod has no guns. This means that it has virtually no capability to engage moving targets that are too close to it. You have to be skilled enough to lead the missile before launching it. In addition to this nerf, for some reason, 
The VT-1 can't follow the mouse from anywhere on the screen, like with any other missile. This means you also have to be extra careful not to move the mouse too much. The second nerf it received was part of the Saklos Guidance Adjustment Change. Most Saklos missiles now control much worse than they used to. With the VT-1, the missile becomes almost impressively unreliable after the motor stops burning. At range, all it takes is simple maneuvering for an aircraft to dodge a VT-1. The Ito-90 was hurt by this change too, since it also employs the VT-1 as its main weapon. But it's especially problematic for the Flaric Rod, since it doesn't get 8 to launch at once. Since it only has two, an aircraft diving down on it from 8 kilometers can easily dodge both of them. From there, the Flaric Rod is completely helpless because the second VT-1 is still in the air, which prevents the reload from starting. As the literal only thing that makes the Flaric Rod better than the Flaric Panzer before it, having VT-1s be nerfed to absolute oblivion really makes its 11.7 battle rating trivial. If a vehicle having the performance of its best missile GIMPT was reason enough for the Tunguska to be moved down from 11.0 to 10.7, why in the actual hell was the Flaric Rod moved up? to 11.7. The only other things it has over the Flaric Panzer include thermals and a better IRST. The main factor balancing out its downsides and the reason why it's top tier is the VT-1. But now that the VT-1 was made so much worse, there really isn't much of a case for it to stay at 11.7 alongside the Pantsir and ADATs. 